Emerging research and clinical experience indicate that ketogenic therapy can help put treatment-resistant depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety, and more into remission. Part of the mechanism is likely the beneficial effect on metabolic health. But some healthcare providers believe that ketogenic diets cause insulin resistance. So is that true? Well, in short, no, it's not, but I, I can see why it can be confusing with terms like adaptive glucose sparing and physiologic insulin resistance. So, so let's make it easier to understand. Welcome to Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, transforming the study and treatment of mental disorders by exploring the connection between metabolism and brain health. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Before we get into the details of insulin resistance, please remember our channels for informational purposes only. We're not providing individual or group medical or healthcare advice or establishing a provider-patient relationship. Many of the interventions we discuss can have potentially dangerous effects if done without proper supervision. So consult your healthcare provider before changing your lifestyle or medications. In addition, please recognize that people may respond differently to ketosis and there isn't one recognized universal response. So briefly, what is insulin resistance? Insulin resistance is the foundation of metabolic dysfunction, and it's, it's when our cells don't react as well to insulin as they should, thus not bringing the glucose into the cells as easily. Thus, they require higher and higher levels of insulin to achieve that impact. And that's the key to insulin resistance. The cells are resistant and there's an elevated level of insulin. This is the cornerstone of metabolic dysfunction that has been associated with multiple diseases from type 2 diabetes to heart disease to cancer and even brain-based disorders like dementia and mental illness. Now, studies indicate that a ketogenic diet is one of the most effective dietary approaches to improving metabolic health and reversing insulin resistance. In fact, many studies demonstrate remission of type 2 diabetes with ketogenic therapy. But why do some healthcare providers believe that ketogenic diets can cause insulin resistance? That seems contrary to the clinical evidence. Well, the problem is how we interpret a few simple medical tests. The issue is that we can't use the same guidelines for interpreting blood sugar responses for someone eating a high carb diet versus someone eating a keto diet. And one example is an oral glucose tolerance test. For this test, you drink a solution containing 75 grams of carbs and get your blood drawn at time zero and various other time points up to two hours or even more. If your blood sugar spikes, rises really high, takes a long time to come down, that's usually consistent with insulin resistance. The glucose load is too much for the body to handle. But remember, this test was designed for people eating the standard industrialized high carb diet. So in this setting, the glucose spikes and rises despite high levels of insulin and the body struggles to bring it down. Now compare that to how someone eating a keto diet may respond to a glucose tolerance test. Often they too will get a blood sugar spike that takes a little while to come down, but the difference is that the insulin level is low. Essentially, when someone's in ketosis, they're unaccustomed to eating large amounts of carbs all at once, especially not a 75 gram sugary slurry, so it shocks the system. But this is not the same as the pathologic response of someone who has true insulin resistance, even if the test result looks similar. The baseline physiology determines whether the response is pathologic or adaptive. And you can tell that because if someone in ketosis gradually ramps up their carb intake over three days to two weeks, the test tends to normalize. And that's not something that will happen with someone with true insulin resistance. So another time this comes up is with the dawn effect, when, when fasting blood sugar test is higher than it is considered normal, say above 100 milligrams per deciliter. Again, for someone eating a high carb diet, this is considered abnormal. But for someone eating a keto diet, it may be a normal response. And here's where we get the terms adaptive glucose sparing or physiologic insulin resistance. The key is that it's a normal adaptive process for the body to react this way and it does so with the insulin levels remaining low. So there's not a dangerous pathology occurring. Again, the test results may indicate insulin resistance, but the background diet and insulin levels matter. What clinicians need to learn is the normal physiologic adaptations that occur when someone is in ketosis. And that doesn't mean they're pathologically insulin resistant. So we can call it adaptive glucose sparing or physiologic insulin resistance, but what it really is, 
is, is ketosis and normal physiologic changes that go along with being in ketosis. So if your doctor tells you that ketogenic diets cause insulin resistance, please share this video with them and, and see if they understand the normal physiology of being in ketosis. And we'll link to an article below that goes into more detail about the Dawn effect or the Dawn phenomenon. Because you know sometimes fasting blood sugar may indicate an issue, but this guide goes into details on how you can sort of differentiate. Because the majority of the time for someone in ketosis, it doesn't. Now, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and please share this with anyone who you think may benefit from it. And also please leave us a comment as we always like to hear about your experiences. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, and we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group.